injury of the ulnar collateral ligament of the thumb. When we discuss the ulnar collateral ligament injury of the thumb, there are some major points we need to highlight. What is a skier thumb? It is an acute injury of the ulnar collateral ligament. What is the gamekeeper's thumb? It's chronic injury of the ulnar collateral ligament. This injury is commonly caused by skiing accident. That's why it is called a skier's thumb. It is called a gamekeeper's thumb because it was a frequent occupational injury. Any severe valgus force on the abducted thumb can injure the ulnar collateral ligament. The stability of the thumb and ligament healing is important. The goal of the treatment and possible surgery is to allow healing of the ligament in order to restore function. It is important to realize that during repair of the ulnar collateral ligament, the adductor aponeurosis blocks the reduction of the ulnar collateral ligament. Where is the rupture? In 80% of the time, it is a distal rupture at the base of the proximal pharynx. This condition is more common in contact and non-contact sports. Any extreme valgus stress to the thumb can cause injury of this ligament, and the most common mechanism is a fall on the abducted thumb. Radially directed force can cause hyperabduction at the MCP joint and can tear the ulnar collateral ligament of the thumb. A stinner lesion means a complete tear of the ulnar collateral ligament that needs repair surgically. A stinner lesion may occur with or without bony attachment. The lesion is usually displaced dorsally and superficial to the adductor aponeurosis. The distal end of the ulnar collateral ligament of the thumb is torn and retracted proximally. When the ligament is completely ruptured, a stenal lesion, which means ligament displacement, occurs in about 80% of the time, and the abductor aponeurosis becomes interposed beneath the UCL. The interposed abductor tendon would not allow healing of this ligament without surgery. You must know that concept. That is important. Injury to the ulnar collateral ligament varies from mild sprain to complete avulsion injury. Symptoms and evaluation. History of a valgus injury followed by pain in the ulnar aspect of the MCP joint that's worse with grasp, swelling and ichymosis on the ulnar side of the MCP joint, tenderness distal to the UCL, external lesion mass may be felt, no end point to stress testing of the thumb in radial deviation. Before valgus stress testing, X-ray should be ordered and reviewed. In flexion, the proper collateral ligament and the dorsal capsule are tight. In extension, the proper collateral ligament and the dorsal capsule are loose, but the accessory collateral ligament and the palmar plate are tight. Stress testing, local anesthesia injected at the ulnar aspect of the joint can be helpful in stress testing. And how do you assess the ligaments? The integrity of the proper collateral ligament is tested by valgus stress with the MCP joint in 30 degrees of flexion. And if there is more than 30 degrees of laxity, or 15 degrees more laxity than the other side, then rupture of the two ulnar collateral ligament is likely. Then you test the thumb in extension and you repeat the same valgus stress. If valgus laxity is less than 30 degrees in extension or less than 15 degrees 
compared to the uninjured side, then the accessory collateral ligament is intact. And because the accessory collateral ligament is contiguous with the proper ligament, that intact accessory collateral ligament will prevent complete displacement of the proper collateral ligament, and the external lesion may not happen. However, this is the important part. If you want to know if the patient will need surgery or not, then test the valgus laxity in extension. And if the valgus laxity is more than 30 degrees or 15 degrees more than the other side, then the accessory collateral ligament is ruptured and the proper collateral ligament is ruptured, then it is a complete rupture. In complete rupture, the sternal lesion is more than 80% likely. So there is a ligament displacement and the aponeurosis of the adductor tendon blocks the repair and that lesion needs surgery. On the underside of the MCP joint of the thumb, there are two ligaments, the proper collateral ligament and the accessory collateral ligament. The true ulnar collateral ligament goes from the proximal dorsal metacarpal head to the distal volar proximal phalanx. The accessory superficial ligament blends with the volar plate and the ulnar sesamoid. In flexion, the proper collateral ligament is the primary stabilizer. It is tight in flexion. In extension, the proper collateral ligament is lax, but the accessory collateral ligament is tight. So when the proper collateral ligament is ruptured, then stability will be present when the thumb is tested in flexion. And when the accessory collateral ligament is also torn, there will be instability in extension as well as in flexion. The diagnosis is usually done clinically by examination, by stress x-rays, and sometimes is confirmed by an MRI, x-rays of an avulsion fracture or an MRI of the torn ligament can be helpful if the diagnosis is not clear. Successful management of acute injuries of the ulnar collateral ligament of the thumb will prevent instability and pain. If the patient is not treated properly, the patient will have decrease in thumb pinch and grasp. How about the doctor policies? The doctor policies is the primary dynamic stabilizer of the CMC joint. It attaches to the proximal pharynx and the ulnar sesamoid, and it lies volar to the axis of rotation. Treatment. Partial tears, immobilization with the thumb, spica cast, or a splint for four to six weeks, then obtain range of motion and grip strengthening. Surgery is done if there is a complete tear with no end point. Surgery is usually done if the thumb is unstable in extension, more than 30 degrees of laxity, or more than 15 degrees of laxity than the other side. That means a complete rupture is present, there is a ligament displacement, and surgery is necessary for this patient. In surgery, the repair or augmentation of the ligament should be anatomic, and the orientation of the ligament should be restored. In chronic injury, the ligament becomes incompetent and reconstruction of the ligament is necessary to improve function. Early diagnosis is the most important factor that decides the functional outcome. With a complete rupture treated operatively within three weeks of the injury, good to excellent result can be expected in 90% of the patient, regardless of the technique used to repair the ligament. Return to play is almost 100% following repair. In surgery, if there is a sternal lesion, 
that Dr. Aponeurosis is interposed under the UCL and prevent its proper attachment. And division of the adductor aponeurosis is necessary to repair the ligament. Complication, persistent instability is rare but can be a problem. And it can occur despite surgery and good technique. If the patient have chronic instability, the patient will complain of pain during pinch and grasp as well as weakness. If chronic instability continue, the patient will have arthritis. 15% of the patient will have residual instability, especially if there is a complete injury treated by immobilization alone. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.